Welcome to the PFN Bengals podcast. I am Dallas Robinson. He is Jay Morrison. Jay, we're going to do some mock drafts today. We've got well, the draft is like two weeks away. I can't believe it. It feels like it's getting closer and closer and because it is. It's right around the corner. We're going to use the Pro Football Network free mock draft simulator to run. We're going to do four mock drafts. We're going to do a couple different scenarios, what the Bengals might target around one, maybe a trade back. We're going to look and see what players will be available at 18 in the second round, we'll do, I think we'll do five rounds for each draft and just see what this year's draft could look like for the Bengals. Jay, I, don't, I know I'm biased. Like I know this is the PFN mock draft simulator, but I do, I do think this is the best one on the market. I use it every, I want to say every day. I know it's not good for my mental health to be doing this at night before I go to sleep and running five <laughs> mock drafts every night, but I, I love it. I, I love using our MDS. It's, it's a great tool. I think everyone should check it out. Yeah, I do too. And I, I'm this, I don't, I don't do quite as many as you, but whenever I am doing a mock draft, I, you know, you, you play, I try to use some different ones just to get a different variety, but I always keep coming back to ours. I just, I, I think it's great. And, um, the, the new multi-user part is incredible too. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to check that out, but, mm. uh, really, really cool addition. And, you know, you can get strangers, you can get friends, we get up to 10. I think they're working on maybe making it up to 32. You got one person doing yeah. each team, but right now you can have 10 people in there. You pick which team you want to draft for and uh, make trades back and forth. It's just, it's really realistic. And I like the speed of ours. I like how clean it is. It's just uh, everything about it's a, a good experience, which is why we are using it for this podcast. Before we get into that, we did want to mention next week, I th- we were planned to do a mailbag show. We want, to, we want to hear any questions that you guys have about the draft. We can look back at free agency. We can look ahead to next season. Any, any Bengals-related questions that you have for, for Jay and I, we do want to talk about that next week. So we'll put out the call on social media, and you can leave comments there. You can leave questions on our, on our YouTube page. But we'll, we'll get it out there for more questions. But just know that we are going to have a mailbag episode next week if you have any thoughts for us. Um, so what we're going to do today is run like run through four mock drafts, like I said. So we we use the PFN mock draft simulator. Um, I think in the first draft we are going to focus Jay on offensive tackle. Now that it just feels like that's the likely option for yeah. the Bengals at eighteen. I mean, it, they could go in other directions. There, we will go through those different paths, but with, with the need at right tackle, with this class, with this loaded offensive tackle class, and so many options of guys that might be there at eighteen. It kind of feels like we have to go with an offensive tackle is kind of our number one mock draft. So that's that's what we'll do in our first one here, Jay. So let's let's go ahead and get this started. We're going to do five rounds. We're not we're not going to do the full seven rounds. We'll do five rounds. Got it set on fast mode here uh, just to speed things along a little bit. So let's let's get started. Let's into this draft. Let it run a little bit here till we get to eighteen. We're going to reject trades for these first these first few mocks. We'll we'll do a trade back mock a little bit later, but. Here is what round one could look like, Jay, and it's it's pretty similar to when I run these mock drafts as well. There's usually an offensive tackle in this range that the Bengals could get. Now, if we look at the top of the board, it looks basically what, like what we think it's going to do. The, the top three quarterbacks are coming off here. I think in reality, most people expect the Vikings will be involved here at some point to get a quarterback. So J.J. McCarthy is probably in real life going to be a little higher. But you see Joe Alt come off at number five to the Chargers, Olu Fushano at number seven to the Titans, Talise Fuaga at number 10 to the Jets, and Amarius Mims to number 13 to the Raiders. Four offensive tackles off the board, Jay, but we're still left with some options here that, that I think the Bengals would consider in Troy Fontenot and J.C. Latham. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because I thought for sure when we did this, we were going to be left with nobody but Mims because when mm. I was when I was doing them on Monday, every time he was available, and now you see what, he went uh, 13th to the Raiders. 13th, yep. Uh, this is I, – I, he's – I like his upside, but I just knowing the Bengals' history, drafting offensive linemen, and his the the lack of time he actually played in in college, it's it's a little uneasy. So it's nice that he's off the board. I you know if if it's me here, I, I'm going Latham. I I love I, you know, and Fontenot has it too the the guard versatility. Mm-hmm. But there's something to be said for the the grown ass men <laughs> that play in the sec and <laughs> yeah. you're and you're talking about i mean he's a guy he's he's played guard he's played right tackle um and, and he's dealt with these behemoths these beasts that they have on the defensive line in the sec and i just i i think he is the better pick here um font knows what one 
one pick above or two rank two yeah, he's above on a little higher. But I if still. You look at, if you look at the OTs too, it's like you you could you could think you could get a Tyler Guyton or a Kingsley Sumatia in the second, a Jordan Morgan, a Patrick Paul, but I, I think that's like a, a pretty steep decline. I think in quality, at least at least from what what Ian Cummings and our other draft people yes. at PFN thinks. I think it's a pretty steep decline. So I think if you're going for an offensive tackle and you, you've got the option between Fontenot and Latham, I mean, it, that's pretty much right where the Bengals want to be, I would think. And, and Fontenot, I mean, I, I think he's even a little more versatile. I mean, I, I think he's a guy some people think could play center if he had to. Right? Yeah, I think five, he, that's, yeah. yeah, I mean, that that's extremely valuable. But but I get where you're coming from about Latham. It's And I think it fits the Bengals draft trends, too. I mean, they love drafting SEC prospects, I think. Mm-hmm. Right. I think that drafting a guy from Alabama, it's you, you never want to be just like a, a school, you know, draft by university guy. But if you look at the Bengals trends, they definitely favor the guys from the big schools, the power five conferences. I think Latham would be the pick in this scenario, too, as, as much as I like Fontenot and would not, would not have a problem if that were the pick either. Yeah, and I guarantee you go back to the offensive tackles that are available mm-hmm. right now. The, I guarantee those top three are going to be gone by the time we pick at 49. The Guyton, yeah. um, the, the BYU kid, I don't how to say that last name, and Jordan Morgan. Yeah. I think Patrick Paul <laughs> will still be there. I don't know if, if that's if, if, if you want to make that pick. So, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm all in yeah. on Latham here. All right, let's go with Latham at number 18. Yeah, we just saw Kingsley Somatia come off the board there. Inject these. Go quickly look back and see who went here after the Bengals. So we took Latham. Chiefs traded up two picks later to get Troy Fontenot, which I think is pretty realistic. The Chiefs are, mm-hmm. are don't basically do not have a left tackle at the moment. They have a third-round pick from last year named Wanya Morris, but they really don't have a veteran option. I think they could get more competition there. Uh, Kingsley Sumatia to the Dolphins. Looks like they traded back up to get him. Jackson Powers Johnson, another offensive lineman, interior guy. Tyler Guyton here at 31. So you're right, Jay. A lot of these offensive linemen are coming off All after 40. Paul. Wow. Like right, right after, right after the Bengals here. So if we went and looked, who would our options be here? We're down to 87 to Roger, Rosen, Roger Rosengarten if we wanted mm-hmm. to take a round two offensive tackle. And again, I think that's pretty realistic to what the Bengals could be dealing with. So let's see what we've got here available in round two, Jay. Got Darius Robinson, who's defensive lineman, who's I think is pretty versatile, can play defensive tackle, but he's definitely not the the you know the one technique, the zero technique the Bengals are probably looking for. TJ Tampa, I think, could be an option as a cornerback. Max Melton, same thing. I think you know if they're looking at a round two pick, I, I think it's probably going to come down to DT, wide receiver, and cornerback. I mean that that's where I'm at. I don't really see any other positions unless there's a clear value somewhere that they just can't deny. I I think that they'll focus in on the, those kind of three positions in the second round if they go with offensive tackle in round one. I, I think any of these top three receivers, Leggett, Polk, and Corley, could potentially be on the Bengals' board if they do want to go with a receiver mm-hmm. there. Um, if they want a DT, I think there are options too. Leonard Taylor from Miami, Michael Hall from OSU, Chris Jenkins from Michigan. I think these guys are all guys who are going to be projected to go in this mid-round two range. Cornerbacks, I, I think there are some options here too. Jay, are you are you leaning in any one direction here? I mean, I think there's players the Bengals could like at all three of those spots, and, may, and maybe there's another spot that you're thinking of that I'm not a, a position beyond these three that they would target. No, did Sweat already go? I was Sweat. Uh, he he already did go. Yes. Yeah, I was wondering how the the DWI 24. was going to affect. I guess it didn't affect him too much at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I mean, I don't know if the Bengals would take him there, given what happened earlier this week. I I don't see them going defensive tackle here unless it was him. And even then, I, like I said, he's probably off their board. Yeah, I've I've been big on on wide receiver here. Um, you know, Ian Cummings, the first time we did the multi user, he was just raving about Jalen Jalen Polk. I don't know if it's mm. Jalen Jalen. I, I I'm not sure the pronunciation. It looks like Jalen. Um, yeah. Inside, outside versatility. He can be in the slot this year along with with uh, Gesicki. And then mm. assuming Higgins moves on, he's a guy that could move outside. Um, yeah, there you go. You, can, you guys, if you haven't used this, look at that. You can call up the guy's scouting report and get all it's of these insights. Yeah. Relative athletic score up here, height, weight, weaknesses, strengths, everything. It's great. He, you know, he doesn't have the size that T has, but he he still can be an outside receiver. Um, I, I've been big on him. I, I've taken yeah. him in the second. I have a two round or a, I have a seven round mock up 
2.0 that went up last night and he was my second round pick. He was my pick, my second round pick in Mach 1.0. So um, I don't want to dominate the picks here that I will, we'll, we'll come together. Maybe we do every other round, but he would be my pick. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it. I, I love that pick. I think Xavier Leggett could be on the board too. I mean, yeah. a little more size and even more athletic from at least from a relative athletic score profile. I think he could be an option. I think if it were me, I, I love I love Polk too. I, I think he's a, a really solid second round pick. I think I would consider the cornerbacks TG Temp and Max Milton just because the Bengals love to get that cornerback depth at the, at the top and mid of round two. I, I could see them adding another body there. But with, with Dax Hill moving to corner and I still do think that if the Bengals are going to make one more free agent signing, maybe, maybe it's a veteran corner. Maybe that's where they go and use their money. I, I, I'm fine going with wide receiver here, and I'm fine going with Jalen Polk. I, I really do like him. So let's go with him at number two. So now we've got basically Latham and Jalen Polk. I think that's pretty pretty solid start to mm-hmm. our draft. All right. Pick 80. Top of the board is Chris Jenkins from Michigan. He He has been slipping in a lot of these mock drafts that I've been doing. We'll see if that it comes comes to in real life as well. Braden Fiske, I think, could be another option down yeah. here as a defensive tackle. Um, if we look at some other spots, the tight end, it looks like Benson Knott has already gone off the board at some point, so he's not an option at tight end anymore. If we wanted to dip down into one of these tight ends like Jatavian Sanders, we could. If we wanted to go for an interior lineman, I think Dominic Pooney from Kansas would probably be the guy if that were a choice. Um, we could look back at cornerbacks. Sane or still. I'm, Sanders still is a guy I like as well. I, I like him as well. Um, I think he could be an immediate. I, I don't know. I don't know where he'd play immediately because I don't think he's going to, he's not going to play over Mike Hilton. I think maybe he's more of a pick for the future, maybe like a depth yeah. piece. Um, but, I, but I would not be opposed to that at all. Um, I think I'd probably be deciding between those two Michigan guys, actually, and Chris Jenkins and, and Sanders still. I don't know. I, any, any thoughts between those two? Like, which ones do you like better? I do like Fisky a lot. I've seen him you like Fisky? Okay. ranked even higher than Newton on some boards. Um, hmm. But I don't know. Positionally, I, 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 I mean, just as an Ohio State fan, I watch a lot of Saner still. And I, I just I, I love the idea. I think he can play yeah. if needed this year. But it's it's kind of that Bengals go to move where you, you, you draft a year ahead. And yeah. he would he would be an ideal slot replacement for Mike Hilton next year. And, you know, you have some injuries this year. You have maybe you know, a, a blowout or two, um, you get, you work him in. I just, I think there's ways to get his feet wet sure. this year, maybe even give him a chance to, to win a, a job somewhere on the field. Um, but then you're set up next year. You've got that ready-made yeah. replacement for Hilton. And um, I just, I, I'm really intrigued by the upside that guy has after watching him uh, and rooting against him. Yeah. Um, and just, he makes, he just makes plays. I think it'd be an interesting pick. I really do. And I, I it's, it, and remember that we do have pick number 97. So I think we can think yeah. about what other options are going to be there at 97. I, I'm fine going with Sanders still, even if it's maybe a little earlier than he'll go in real life. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he could sneak up into, into the early third, but I, I do like that pick a lot. I think it gives you options. You, you are always going to have to run through so many defensive backs and the Bengals know this better than anybody look they've had they've added Geno Stone Von Bell I think getting a guy like Sanders still and just kind of dropping him into that mix I think would be pretty exciting so I, I'm fine with that pick let's go with him here he's number 99 on PFN's board so we are taking him a little bit early but I, I really do like that pick as well and maybe Fisky sur- nope there went Fisky I was gonna say maybe yeah, he survives right. but he did not so Fisky goes at 92 right up five picks above where the Bengals are gonna pick um so he came off the board. Where did Chris Jenkins go? Chris Jenkins. Maybe he's still on the board. Chris Jenkins is still he's on the still board. There. Pull the trigger. I think we got to take him at this point. Two Michigan yeah. guys. Let's do it. So now we've got JC Latham, Jalen Polk, Mike Sanders still, and Chris Jenkins. I, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with this haul. Yeah. We've got Get two more in. picks here 115 and 149. What else do we need, Jay? If we want a running back, I think there's some interesting guys here. Audra Custom did not test that well, but he's a guy that a lot of guys like as a, as a power back. Jalen Wright's more of, of kind of that receiving back. I think there, there are guys here that fit. I, I'd be okay waiting on running back until yeah, I would a little bit too. later. Um, 
I've seen a lot of mocks where the Bengals are taking like a fourth round pick on a running back. I, I just don't see that. I, I think you go out and pay Zach Moss four million a year or so. You, you liked what you saw from Chase Brown. I think you can add like a sixth or seventh round running back, which I've done a lot of my Bengals mock drafts. But mm-hmm. fourth round's a little Same. fourth round's a little early for me. It's a little early for me to, to be doing that. Um, if we want to double dip at wide receiver, Jermaine Burton's a guy I like. I think just like a professional receiver, probably never going to be a star, but I think could be a competent wide, re- wide receiver three for a long time. Um, tight ends, Theo Johnson is like blew up the combine. I mean, this is a guy yeah. who's just like a pure, pure, pure athlete. Cade Stover. I mean, we took two Michigan guys. We could we could balance that out with another Ohio State here, <laughs> guy if we wanted I to. I like I like Johnson more than Stover. Okay, Jared Wiley is a guy. Also, that I remember I think Ian talked about last week on our show that yeah. this is a guy who could be a true three down tight end six 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 seven two fifty. I think that could be an option. Um, just looking at some of these other guys here, I don't know that there's anybody that totally uh, Tanner Bordellini is a guy I like as well. This now this is a guy who's extremely mo- mobile. In that Jason Kelsey mode, I'm not sure if that's a fit for this Bengals offensive line at this point where they're looking for bigger, mauler types. I don't know. Um, then again, Tyler Linderbaum was was this type of center, and he fit in the Ravens offense perfectly, even though they run a lot of you know zone or a man scheme. So I think, I think it, it could work. For me, I think I'm going with Theo Johnson. I'd yeah. like to get a tight end here. I, I really would. I, I think it's, it's long past due that the Bengals take a chance on a mid-round athletic freak i mean this is the type of guy we that the bengals should be adding i I, i'm fine taking theo johnson here and hoping he can kind of harness that athleticism and become this well-rounded weapon that we think he could be i mean he produced at penn state with no quarterbacks give him a guy like joe burrow and yeah i just i love his athleticism and his upside um you know i I would consider interior o-line here even beyond Mm -hmm. the wisconsin kid but I think that can wait. I think that can wait till next round and be the pick. And, um, you know, I've had Theo Johnson in all my mocks so far as well. I just, mm-hmm. I, I think that's a really good fit in the fourth round. And who knows if we'll even be still available because uh, right. Field Yates from ESPN did a mock draft. I, I want to say he had Theo Johnson as the 49ers second round pick. So like yeah. way higher than we're getting him here. So who knows if he'll even be available. We'll, we'll take the value here at one. It's like I last year. We thought all those tight ends were going to be around in the fourth mm-hmm. round. And they all went so early. And that's the Bengals kind of got caught holding the bag. Um, I do think yeah. they have more options here for like the mid round. If that if it had, I don't think you're going to see the same kind of run that you did last year. No, I agree. I agree. And, and Jared Wiley is still here. If we would have wanted him, that could have been an option. Um, take another look at the running backs. A lot of the same guys. I think Garindo is a guy that you took at one point in some of your mocks. B- bigger in guy. Good RAS. Could be a goal line guy. Tyrone Tracy is a guy that Greg Cosell from NFL Films has identified as, as a really interesting prospect. Came up as a wide receiver. So he's kind of like one of these Antonio Gibson types that has developed into a running back, but still has that receiving capabilities that I I think could be interesting if the Bengals wanted to take a chance there. Jacob Cowing is a guy who's, I think, an athletic prospect who could probably play more in the slot um, if you're looking for like a true, true Tyler Boyd replacement. But having already gotten Jalen Polk, I'm not sure that that is a need. Um, Look back at some of these interior line options. There are some choices here. Hunter Norzad's a guy who's getting a little steam I've seen lately as, as a center prospect. Um, let's take a look at the defense. I don't know, Jay, if you're interested by any of these guys, any of these positions. Go back to Maybe. D-tackle because I, I, I could see them doubling up there since they didn't go yeah. so early. But Gabe Paul's a guy I have looked at because he is just so tall and so <laughs> athletic. I, I think – I. You know, he Ian wrote here that he's usually playing as a, as a three four end, but he could play four three inside tackle and play against uh, interior offenses line. He's he's a guy that I have looked at in in some mock drafts. Logan Lee is another guy that I've taken maybe a little bit later than here, but another another big guy on the inside. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is this is kind of the area where I think the Bengals could go in basically any direction. You know, yes. you could take. Any pick, whatever, whoever they think is like a value that's fallen here. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind getting another interior offensive lineman, I think. Yeah. That's, you know, even, even if you, or, um, yeah. Even if you think Latham can compete at left tackle, I think, you know, you're looking for a long term center. You're looking for a, another guard if Alex Kappa only has a, a year left. You know, you, 
there are, you need guys that can play in the interior. I wouldn't mind taking Zach Zinter again, but I don't want to take another Michigan guy, a third, <laughs> third Michigan guy. I'd be fine take, taking Norzet, Norzet here, even, even if it's a little little high. He's at 178 on the PFN big board, so 30 picks early, but I, I'd be fine taking him here. We'll get, get another Big Ten guy, another Penn State guy. <laughs> two Let's Michigans, two Penn States. Can, can you tell where we're from the Midwest? So we watch a lot of Big Ten football. Okay, is, is that obvious? Okay. I think that's a pretty good haul. I mean, I would be very happy with that if I were a Bengals fan yeah. as a, as a five round haul. I mean, you, you fill a lot of needs. I don't think you've reached. I think you've, you've gotten depth options. You've got long-term starting options. I, I'd be happy with that if I were a Bengals fan. Yeah. I, I, I people will hate it. Um, people hate everything that you, we do. Whenever you do a mock people, you get far more complaints than you do compliments. But I do, I think this is a really good haul personnel wise and positionally. I, I, I I see this as kind of now maybe who knows that the, the players might be different, but it, it this mm-hmm. feels like the path, you know, where, where you're getting out of day two with offensive tackle, wide receiver, cornerback and defensive tackle. Maybe there's a wild card in there, but you yeah. know, their first four picks, uh, I would be willing to bet that, you know, three of those, if not all four are going to be addressed. I agree. I, it, whatever order they come in, I think the first four picks will be offensive tackle, wide receiver, cornerback, defensive tackle. Mm-hmm. I, I, I would be surprised if they don't get one of each with this with those four picks. Um, later round options that I that I think positions that we would focus on in these later rounds if we did them: running back for sure, uh, and then linebacker. I, I think we I think the Bengals mm-hmm. will probably take one, if not two, sixth or seventh round linebackers just to fill in that special teams room. Yes, you know you're you're going to need more athletic guys with these new kickoff rules. You're going to need mm-hmm. guys who can move and, and block. You're going to need a lot of the, those guys edge too. I think you could get a late round edge guy, even if it's not going to be a guy who's just ever going to be a starter, a guy who could play on special teams an athletic guy who could, could fit on these new kickoff rules. Yeah. Right. And not just the kickoff. I mean, the punt, punt coverage and punt return all too, it, where yeah, those, all you know, all, those guys are linebackers play big roles on those teams. Absolutely. Okay. We're going to do restart here. We're going to move a little bit quicker because we've already taken uh, what, 22 minutes on that first one. So we'll move a little bit quicker on these next ones. <laughs> So for this one, we're either going to hope to get a defensive tackle or a wide receiver here with our first pick, um, whichever one we like more, because I think that is a path that the Bengals could consider. That's a lot of picks the Raiders are offering us. We'll reject all of these. So I don't think we're going to get a wide receiver here, Jay. Brian Thomas went 12th. I think he's kind of the guy that the Bengals could get in the mm-hmm. first round if they get a receiver. Not going to happen here. Let's consider these defensive tackles. Johnny Newton from Illinois at 21, Byron Murphy from Texas at 22. So very close in our rankings here. Ian was on the show last week. I mean, he has them close in his rankings and he, and he views them close, you know, and how he assesses them. He obviously has Newton just a tad bit higher. I don't know. Is there a guy, Jay, between these two that you favor? It, it, for me, there really isn't. I, I'm not sure if there's a, I think they're both like right there. I, I wouldn't be surprised if either of these ended up being the Bengals first round pick if it wasn't an offensive tackle. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how this plays out. Not just the draft, but the the rookie years of these guys. Because you know, I was a little surprised when I asked Ian about that, and and he he has Newton slightly ahead, and he's kind of an outlier in that. I mean, a lot of people have him close, um, but that most people have Murphy ahead of Newton. And you know, if Newton ends up having the best, you know, a lot of it depends on too where they land and what kind of situation they're in. But if Newton ends up being the better player this first year, Ian can do a victory lap. Um, I trust Ian. I, I do. I, yeah. and I haven't grinded the film or anything. There's a lot to like about both guys. Um, but but if he tells me he sees a little higher upside in Newton, I trust him because no one grinds film like that guy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think you just read through the scouting report that this is a guy who is going to create that interior pressure that the Bengals are looking for, that they're hoping they're getting from Sheldon Rankins, but he's he's not a long-term option. I think if you want a long-term interior disruptor, most likely you're going to have to find that guy in the first round. So if, if we think Johnny Newton can do that, let's go with him here at 21. So now I think we're looking at the same sort of positions we looked at in our first mock. It's just going to be a different caliber of player at each position. So if we look here, we're not taking a safety clearly, but Zach Frazier, I think, is a guy who could maybe sneak into the first round. I'm doing a mock draft later this week. I, I think I am going to have Zach Frazier sneak into the end of my first round. Hmm. He he probably wouldn't play in year one. I mean, I, I think he a lot of people view him as a strict center only and not a guy who could who can move to guard. He's not going to play above Ted Karras. So I think you're you're drafting a redshirt guy if you're doing that. 
Um, if we're got a defensive tackle, Cooper Beebe, I mean, he could play. He could compete with with uh, with uh, Cordo Volson. God, I'm blanking there for a second on Cordo Volson's name. Um, I if we look at offensive tackles, let's see what we have here. Patrick Paul from Houston. Uh, Roger Rosengarten, who who is ranked much lower on our big board, but has I have seen him in the second round of a lot of mock drafts. I, I think he could yeah. be an option there. Um, if you want to look at defense, it's it's really picked over at cornerback. I, I think there there are not that second these second round options that we could consider. What do you think, Jay? What do you, what do you like here? I would not be opposed to going after an offensive lineman, whether that's Patrick Paul or maybe getting another interior option to compete with Folson or or play long term. Once Karras and, and Kappa move on. Yeah, I still think it's too stir- early for the Bengals to go into your O line here. Um, okay. I, for the sake of variety, I don't know that we want to go Polk again. This is yeah. what I did on my 2.0. I just, just to be contrarian, I went with a D tackle in the first round and it was Newton. And then I went back to Polk in the second round. Um, but I, I'm torn because. I like Rosengarten better. And mm. do you roll the dice and, and see? Because if, if he's not there in round three, mm-hmm. then then you've got a bit of an issue. Um, I don't looking know. At, you're looking at yeah, a couple of these later mid round prospects. If you if you trust the, the, these guys, could and it's not. We know that the they don't, the Bengals don't have to necessarily find a starting right tackle. They've got Trent Brown. Uh, mm-hmm. That's true, but Trent Brown's missed a lot of games, you know, and yeah. they, there, there's a decent chance whoever the Bengals take as an offensive tackle is going to have to play in year one, whether that's at right tackle or somewhere else along the line. Um, so I, I would be okay with that, too. I, I think you could consider these other receivers. I mean, Xavier Leggett, you could you could mm-hmm. consider him here. Um, you could consider him as an option, but I, I'd be okay locking in an offensive tackle because I, I just think the Bengals have to walk away with, with, with an offensive tackle option with, with these, with one of these first four picks. And you're right. If we wait, it, it's going to be a steep decline. So let, let's go with Rosengarten here with our second pick, even if it's a little bit of a reach. So now we've, we've hit the trenches hard here. We've got Newton, we've got Rosengarten. So let's see what is available still. Malachi Corley is a pretty interesting player here at 63. You know, he's, I love I love when people are called bowling balls. That's, a, that's <laughs> one of my favorite descriptors of any any athlete is a bowling ball. So I'm always down for that. Um, Marshawn Neeland is it Neeland? I think it's Neeland. He, he's an interesting guy, very athletic prospect. I've seen him go in the second in some mock drafts. If the Bengals want to get another edge rusher, but that's obviously not a, an area of concern. Um, I think we could probably wait on tight end. Yeah, cornerback. I mean, we could we could grab one here, but. I wouldn't mind taking a chance on Malachi Corley, honestly, and getting a, an explosive option who could maybe maybe take over for T when the time comes, but could could get some interesting playing time during his rookie year. Yeah, I'm surprised. I thought Roman Wilson might still be here. Mm-hmm. Oh, the good of the what receivers? Yeah, he's Jordan not. Burton, Johnny Wilson. Yeah, Roman Wilson. Where did he go? Ricky Pierce all came off right above right us. Right Walker. Yeah. Roman Wilson might have at the end of the second. Oh, wow. Court, okay. Oh, they traded early. up for him. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, what was this? Was this a Saint or still pick last time? This one was he. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. Yeah, let's go receivers, just so we're not doing the same thing and it's a different path. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, Saint or still he uh, he could still be there. Uh, he could. When he the could. come back up at ninety seven. He could. Yeah, Corley. I'm not sure if he's like a guy that truly fits what the Bengals are looking for, but. Let's let's take him for for the value and for the sake of variety here. Let's take him in the third. So now we've addressed that. Let's see who else we have here. So Johnny Wilson is still available. Jermaine Burton is still available. If we want to get another wide receiver, Neeland is still available along the edge. The one the one position that we have not filled here that we've been filling in other spots is cornerback. So let's take a look at that. At that. So Sanders still is still here. Yep. Do we want to get him again, or should we go for someone new for variety? I, I um, like him a lot. I mean, I, I, I do I, too. I, I just to feel like he's a great here. fit for them. And- Let's take him. It's it's too hard to pass up on him here. So now we we are at one fifteen. We filled our our main four positions here with Newton, Rosengarten, Corley, and Sanders. Still, now I think the board opens up a little more. We can yeah. truly do whatever we want. 
We've got uh, Bordellini here again as an offensive center option. Jalex Hunt has been getting steamed up a little bit from Houston Christian, um, potentially as a pass rushing option. Uh, Dylan Lobb, this guy, don't think he'll ever be like an NFL caliber runner, but if you want a guy who can catch passes, I think that's a guy you're looking for. I, I would not be opposed to getting another offensive lineman, um, especially if it's another guy you think has inside-outside versatility who could play guard. In a pinch, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I, I think it's too high for linebacker. Um, what, what do you think, Jay? Who do you, who do you like? Is here? McKinley Jackson still there? Defensive tackle? Let's see. He is not. He is not. Yeah, okay. I think he went right here. Oh, there he top was. Yeah. Fourth, top of the fourth. The floor. Okay. Could be, it could be a very interesting pick. I think if it, it seems like him, him and Sweat are like the two kind of true nose tackles mm-hmm. in this draft. And then if you're looking like sixth round, there's a guy named Evan Anderson from FAU who I think if the Bengals just don't get a big body on the interior, maybe could be a late round option. But I think for me, I, I would be looking at man, another offensive lineman probably or or an edge rusher. Maybe maybe Hunt, maybe Bordellini, maybe Fisher, just to kind of bolster that offensive line a little bit more. I mean, if this was the only one we were doing, I'd probably go back to Theo Johnson here, but you know, we don't mm. we don't want to duplicate too much what we've already I done. Probably would too. Yeah. Um I could see taking him. I mean, I obviously, yeah, we could take him again. But we've is, already done that. Is McCormick, the interior lineman, still available? Mm, I think he went as well. I think yeah. he might he must have just gone. It's hard to keep that go so fast. It's hard to I know. Yeah, yeah, he he went, went, he went to the six, One pick before we took Sanders okay. still. Yeah. I think you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna commandeer this pick, Jay. I'm yeah, going go right ahead because I'm. Stuck. I love Bordelini. I love okay. Bordelini. I think this. I don't know if he's a perfect fit again, but I, I think you take the chance on a on a guy with his upside and, and hope he can develop into a long term center. All right, so now we've got and, two and offensive linemen. We're probably good there. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say they will get a true assessment. I mean, they meet with them and they make their own imp- impressions yeah. on these guys. But um, you know, Zach knows Luke Fickle really well, and, and so him playing for Luke last year, he he, he will get. Um, a, a true accounting for what that guy is like in the locker room as a, as a teammate, all that kind of stuff, not just what you see on film. That's a really good point. That's a very good point. Um, to fill out this draft, we could take, we could take a running back. I mean, it's fifth round now. It's, it's not that fourth round pick that we kind of talked about that might be a little too early. Uh, we have not graft, drafted a tight end yet. I think the, these guys are pretty athletic. Eric Hall, we don't have the RAS in here, but I, but I believe he tested pretty well. Same with tip Ryman. Um, what else do we have? More defensive tackles. Edge is a little picked over. Everything's kind of picked over once you get to these late rounds, I guess. Mm. Is there anyone that stands out to you here? I could I could see taking a running back here. Um, whether it's Garundo, whether it's Tracy, those are a couple of guys we talked about earlier. I I could see throwing in a, a that or or going with one of these late round tight ends. Yeah, I I mean Eric All went to Fairfield High School just like me, so that yes, that, that's, uh, that's a lure, but. I, yeah, I mean, what if we don't go? I mean, if you don't get a tight end here, you're, that you're, you're looking you're at two drafts in a row where you probably yeah. should have and you didn't. I mean, maybe they get one of these late guys. Yeah. But it, it just still feels a little too early with all coming off the knee injury. And yeah. um, I, I might lean toward Garendo here. You know, he's got kick return experience too. Yeah. Um, and, I like you know, that. I, maybe he's your. He, you know, your personal protector, he, he's, he can have other roles on special teams. And, and what Darren yeah. Simmons talked about where, yeah, you want to get more guys that can return kicks, but you can still only dress 46 of them on game day. So if a guy is just a returner, well, I feel like Grendo could come in and, and beat out Travion Williams. Now Travion can return kicks too, but I think Grendo could come in and beat out Travion for that, for that running back three spot. And then he's dressing on game days and he, he is an option to go back there as a second kick return with Charlie Jones or whoever else it is that they put back there. Absolutely. I, I think he, I think he could be a really good fit and you know, we, we loved the Zach Moss signing, but maybe Zach Moss doesn't work out and he's not here after this season. I think Garundo could be a, a good fit as a compliment with Chase Brown. He's a bigger body. He could be a power back, but also somebody that I think could develop into a good receiver too. So let's go with him to finish up our draft. Yeah, he can't play scared and he can't draft scared, but I I I, I am concerned about Chase Brown's size. You know, it, how mm-hmm. durable can he be with an increased workload? And I think it's another reason they've got Zach Moss, where you're going to see a 60, 40, 55, 45 kind of split, just so Chase Brown isn't the main guy. But 
He runs hard. He runs tough. There's a lot to like about him, but his size does concern me about durability. Totally, totally. So I think adding another option here, just as a late round guy, I think I think is a good good pick. I think this is a pretty real, realistic mock draft as well, Jay. I mean, again, we've targeted the same four positions in the first four rounds. I, I still think it will be offensive tackle at 18, but if if mm-hmm. who knows if the Bengals just like love Johnny Newton? Maybe they love Johnny Newton. They can't get enough Johnny Newton. They must have Johnny Newton. <laughs> this could be how this draft would play out. I think that you you go for a higher upside offensive tackle in the second round and then kind of build from there. I think I think this could work. Um, let's go ahead and start our next mock where we try and get a receiver. Now this might take, uh, we might have to restart this one a a time or two before we actually get a wide receiver that we want here in round one, but let's just see and hope that Brian Thomas falls to us here. Getting lucky, getting lucky. He did. He's there, right? Yeah. He is there. So, you know, I think it's pretty unlikely the Bengals would take a run one wide receiver. I, I, we've talked, you know, how many minutes have we talked about the fact that T Higgins is probably not getting traded, that they're probably good for this year with Higgins and Chase. But on the outside chance that that they really love Brian Thomas, and and I think he'd be the only, you know, obviously the Bengals are not going to be able to get Harrison or Adunze or Neighbors. That we, we all know that. Hmm. Thomas, I think, is probably the only other receiver that could they could consider at 18. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they could pick somebody else at 18 that they really like, but is A.D. Mitchell going at 18? Is Xavier Worthy going at 18? I don't think so. I think that it would have to be a trade back. I think if they stick at 18 and pick a receiver, the only guy they're really going to consider is Brian Thomas. Yeah, I agree with you. All right, let's go with him, and let's just see how this plays out if if they took him at 18. So as expected, a lot of these offensive tackles are going to come off the board wow, here. Even Paul's so gone. Let's see who we have. Frazier is again available. Paul is gone. Let's see who we have at offensive tackle. Rosengarten, old reliable, still there. Um, if we want to go with that, if we look at DT, I don't know how to say this guy's last name. I, I've did. Is it? <laughs> is that how you it's say it's it? A, okay. Arohoro, Arohoro? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Uh, Leonard Taylor, the third, Michael Hall, Chris Jenkins, Britton Fiske, guys we've talked about. If we want to go with a second round DT. And I think some interesting cornerback options here, too. We talked about Rick on the show last week that I, I believe Ian said he's more of a, of a man to man corner. Mm-hmm. Um, last year, I think it has fallen a little bit. He had some some poor testing numbers. I'm not sure if those have been updated on here, but did not test very well. Got a little pop up there. Did not test very well at his pro day. Um, no, Jay, I, th- I think man, it's tough. I, I might go DT here just because of the options that are available. But but then again, maybe you wait be, and you hope that one of these guys can fall to your next pick. I mean, like Kenley Jackson, maybe he falls to your to your third round pick and you go with a different position here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they've got the tie in at Clemson with, you know, Marion Hobby. Um, Miles Murphy played with a row row. A row, a row. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to say even when you're looking at it. Um, <laughs> I, know. I thought Melton might still be here, but I guess he's not. Yeah, what, um, yeah he 42. Yeah, yeah, there he's 42. I think he was you know, sneaking in the bottom of round one in, in some mocks too. Wow. You know, you look what Sweat went three picks ahead. You know, I, I still mm-hmm. don't know how two picks ahead. Well, yeah, three. Um, how this DUI plays into things. You know, if yeah. that's. We we talk about their their go to move is the trade back in the second round. Would yeah. he's sitting there at forty six? Would they move up to get him? Because yeah. like you said, he is the the premier run stopping guy in this draft. And if you if you get that close, you know they've they've done it in in uh, two years ago. They traded up in the second round three spots to get Cam Taylor Britt. If it's a guy they really like a lot. Maybe they would, but we're not doing that in this one. No, um, and it's it's so it's it, just on sweat for a second, like man, a guy getting a DWI or a reported DWI like two weeks before the draft, like come on, is, I don't know if that's what I don't know if that's what you want to add to your locker room. I mean, I'm sure right. he has an explanation, but it's like man, it's just so tough when this stuff happens so close to the draft. It's like what what are you thinking? You know, what, and, what? And it's not like he had a clean slate before this. He you know, kind of exactly. had the reputation as a party exactly. guy, and it's like now you can't. And it was the middle of the afternoon. I mean, it's I just, I, it's not a he's good He's a look. big dude. And, he's a big yes, dude. 
What's yes. the, what, how many, how many beers did this That's guy a lot of shots to get above the D? You know, it's, it, I don't know. It, I'm not trying to judge anybody. We've all done crazy, stupid stuff, but I, I think it's tough when it's two weeks before the draft, even if it's a position you need, a guy you'd like, it's like, man, can't hold this together two weeks before the draft. I don't know. How's, how's it going to be when he's making, you know, a million dollars a year? I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, it's about IQ tests as much as it is impulse it's, control as well. I mean, how, how you just, you can't do that. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I'd lean towards a Rojo here. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Let's let's go with that. So we still need an offensive tackle. We still need a Rosengarten survives. Did he? Did he? Let's see. No, he did not. No, no he, he did. did. He did. He did. He's he's still yeah. there. He's still there. Yeah, I think I mean, we gotta go with him. Yeah, you do. I mean, it's just it's not I, I, there's but not the variety we want with this. But interesting, Fisky went one pick before. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, but yeah, I think we have to take Rosengarten here. I just yeah. think he's a, a, a cut above these other options here. Let's go with him. He was my third round pick in, in the Mach 2.0 I have up right now. Okay. So now cornerback is like the one of our big four that we have not filled. Let's just see who's available. We're not taking Sanders still. Again. We've already taken him enough. I did see McKinley Jackson as the number one option here. Now, <laughs> we, I think that's kind of interesting. Now, Aroro is more of a, more of like a three technique interior guy. He's under 300 pounds. He's going to be that. In- yeah. Now, Ian does see his alignment versatile who can play anywhere. But if you want, the, again, that true big body nose tackle, I think McKinley Jackson is your mid-round option if if you want to double dip. Um, I don't know. I think you could still consider corner. You could double dip on receiver if you wanted to, although I, I don't think you need to do that, do that after taking a round one wide receiver. You could go other ways, but I, I, I think McKinley Jackson at least has to be in consideration, even though we've already taken a DT. Yeah, I agree. And it's he wasn't there like right last time at mm-hmm. 97 no. he'd already gone. So um and, and it it kind of goes into when, when they have an abundance when they don't have the minimum picks, they've got some extra ones. They mm-hmm. do like to do this double up. It's not necessarily back to back rounds, but they're close together and the fact that yeah, they're both defensive tackles but they're really kind of different guys. One's a three tech, one's in the run stopper and um I, I would I don't love unless it's sane or still again, and we don't want to do that. I don't love the other yeah. cornerback options right now. So I, I think, yeah, I think McKinley Jackson would be the guy. And you take you take a row row. You take you take Jackson. You feel good about your defensive tackle situation for the next few years. Long-term, I think you, yeah. you've got kind of those, those pieces in place. Sheldon Rankin signed a two year deal, but it's you know it's realistically more of a one year deal. BJ Hill, who who knows what the future is there? Zach Carter, we don't know. At least you're getting two guys you feel good about that can be contributors for the next few years. You feel like you've like crossed that off your list for at least yeah. a few off seasons. Let's go with Jackson there. So now I do think we probably do want to maybe consider a cornerback. If there's one that we like here at 115. I don't know. These, these guys are, are a little higher rated, a little lower actually than, than what we're looking for. If we just go to the top of the board, we've got estimate here as a running back option. Uh, Taylor Demerson was a guy who who Ian Cummings really liked um, as a safety, but with all the safeties the Bengals added this year, I no I don't think it's a it. I could still see like a late round safety maybe as like a pure special teams guy, but I just don't see it here the fourth round. Um, we talked about Hunt earlier. I think if you wanted to add an athletic edge, I, I could see that maybe McCormick is still here if you wanted to kind of dub, double down on another offensive lineman. Um, what do you think, Jay? Any anything? Here tight end still there. there? Let's see. Yes, Wiley. he is. Yeah. He is. I, that could be I, a good pick. Yeah, I yeah. like that. I like that. Yeah, Ian talked about him. He's got the size. Um, I like yeah. that. I think he's more of a guy who's ready to be that inline three mm-hmm. down guy you can block than maybe some of these other tight ends we talked about. So let's go with him there. Our last pick. Who do we have available? All right. We're not going to go with DT. We've already gotten one. We could go with a, with an interior lineman here potentially. Um, Johnny Dixon is is he the highest rated corner? I believe so from Penn State. A little, little on the small side. Daquan Hardy also from Penn State, also on the small side. Um, got some edge rushers here. You could take a linebacker, I, I guess, to to start building out that depth there. But you know they've got they've got two starters. They re-signed ADG. I'm not sure that's that's yeah. a huge need. I don't know. There's there's not anybody here that truly, truly stands out to me, Jay. Um, what about a receiver double up? Who are the receivers that are available? Because could consider that. It's, they're, they're 
quite a bit lower than, than our pick yeah. here, but um, you know, Florent Florent is a guy I know you've taken in your mocks as a guy who's got return experience, but he's you know he's a sixth, seventh round guy. I don't think he's yeah an option here at one forty nine. Um, you know, I don't know. I'd, I'd be okay going with another offensive lineman potentially, getting a guy who's a a true guard. Again, we've talked about that the Bengals are facing kind of uncertainty on in the interior line in, in the years to come. Even if you're, you know, Rosengarten could compete to play left guard in year one, but maybe Robinson's a guy who who could play down the road. Well, yeah. What about Edge? What who who's there? Edge. There, there are some guys. There's some guys right around where we're kind of picking. Jonah Ellis, six two two fifty. Cedric Johnson. Pretty good relative athletic score. Again, we're not grinding the tape on these late round guys. If yeah, Ian was here, he, he, he could give us a better. He could give us a better assessment on on you know these weaknesses and strength of these late round guys. For us, it's more about kind of filling these positions and getting good value. I think. Yeah, I think you know, interior line or running back maybe yeah. here with. Let's say Robinson. Lane, I think. Yeah. That, so we've double dipped at a two. It you know two trench positions. We've really hit the trenches hard in this draft, um, but we. Started it off with a skill position player. I think that could be pretty dynamic in the in the right conditions. So again, yeah. another kind of scenario that I think could make sense for the Bengals, and that's what we're trying to do here is just kind of consider the different paths that they could take. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, we're going long here. Let's speed through this last mock draft because we're we're going well over our time. We are gonna do. We are gonna we're gonna trade. trades here. Fingers crossed, we get a, some good trades. We have to make more picks. <laughs> I know. Unless we get some some uh, future picks, oops, where did that one go? Uh, we'll go back okay. one spot. One back one spot. We pick up eighty three and we give up one forty nine. I mean, I would absolutely take that. No question. Yeah, but that's, that's the Rams. Um, let's and Latham's see. Latham's still available. I would it, or Latham or Turner. You get or Thomas. I I would. Accept. Let's see what else we have. But yeah, I, let's yeah, see the other I'm, offers. So the Jet, Giants are willing to give us a future second I'm, and some mid round stuff, but drop thirty picks. I'm not think going so. back twenty. Yeah. We're rejecting twenty nine picks. No, and yeah. and there's it is the, every time it comes up. <laughs> the Dolphins want to move. They want to move up three picks, and they'll give us a future second. So I love that offers. trade, but I, it doesn't work as well for this exercise because you know you don't you don't get the payoff right away, and I don't know yeah. how the Bengals. You know, they're they're so focused on year to year to year and kind of getting that piece in the distance. Uh, That's it, great to get an extra second next year, and if you get an extra yeah. third, well, no, the T wouldn't happen next year. But it, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I just I like that Rams one to go back one spot. You've got three guys that I really like there. Really four. You'd be happy with Newton or who they end up. Yeah. They took Mims. Oh no, we got. Yeah. The, well, the only okay, so I haven't accepted a trade yet. My only concern okay. here is, I think the Rams could trade up and take J.C. Latham. I mean, he's the only offensive tackle who's who's available here. I mean, unless you're okay going down to Guyton or Suamatia. So if if we trade out, I mean, I think we have to be okay with the idea of taking one of the other guys because I, I sure the Rams could take Dallas Turner, they could take Brian Thomas, but I think there's a decent chance they could they could be trading up for Latham. So if we're okay with that. Then I'm then I'm fine with it. Yeah, because I'm fine with. I mean, yeah, you would like to get Latham, but mm-hmm. I I don't think you're gonna be upset if you get Thomas or Turner. Yeah. We haven't even talked about an early edge, but man, if he if that guy falls that far, yeah, do you think that could be a possibility? I mean, they have so many edge guys, but samples in a contract year, or size in a contract year, Hubbard is could be on his last year. There could be a long term need. I mean, if if the right guy falls, maybe. I mean. Do we? They're high on Murphy. They took him in the first round, obviously. But did you yeah. see enough last year to feel confident? Um, it's unknown. Lou, unknown. Yeah, Lou seemed optimistic about Joseph Osai, but we really haven't seen much from him. Yeah. Um, so, I, yeah. And again, it's it's kind of like cornerback, where you know, get him before you need him and stock up. And it's sure. and and be, clearly best player available. I, I, I would yes. think. I don't know how many guys they have first round grades on, but I would think Dallas Turner would be one. Sure. Okay, you want to accept this Rams trade then? I like this. Yeah, game. let's see who they take. All right, let's take that. They took Dallas Turner. All right. Yeah. So okay. we still so you have still, we you get late. We still them. have that. But well, we do have more offers here if we want to consider. Um, the Ravens want us to move back eleven spots. They'll give us their second rounder. That's too far for me. I think I wouldn't go that far. And then same type of thing here from the Chiefs. I, again, I don't, I don't think the Bengals are moving back that far. No. Um, 
So we did pick up an extra third round pick. So man, getting, getting all these top 100 selections. I mean, I love it. I, I yes. love getting so many bites and, of the and apple. You still and, get and what is a deep class of guys. Well, and we're still going to take Latham here. Exactly. So let's draft Latham here. Mm-hmm. Now we're still waiting till 49, but, it, but it, it just opens up the board so much more. I think that you've got that extra pick you can, you can get. Okay. So they want us to move back 21 spots. They'll give us a second. The Giants will. I think the Giants are going to be absolutely god awful next season. So that's going to be a pretty high second round pick. I don't um, want to move back. I, I see Lad McConkey available. I'm I'm running. I'm okay. turning down all trades and Let's running see. and taking him. You would take him above above Max Melton. Yes. Because I think you're still going to have Sanders still in play. Now you got two two of those picks right in that range where where he's going to be McConkey just inside yeah. outside. I I think. Yeah, yeah. Cornerback does kind of fall off. Um, I get. Yeah, you, you're hoping for Sanders still at that point. Yeah, I I, I, I like I like that. And pick it's too. not. And, an, it's it makes sense from all the reasons we talk about, but it's not. Like I gotta have it position. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Kind of like tied in last year. Now, I know yeah. that bit him a little bit, but um, I think you've got enough playmakers in that that secondary, and they are high on DJ Ivy. I don't know where he's at in his recovery, how soon he comes back, but I think it's a risk worth taking to to get a guy. It's it's almost like taking Brian Thomas in the first round. You know you're gonna yeah. have to make concessions elsewhere, but it's just too good of a pick to to turn down. Yeah. No, I think that I think that makes a solid point. And you're right. He's he could probably play in the slot year one, but I, I think people have pigeonholed him as just a slot receiver. He absolutely can play on the outside. He played on the outside. He mm. could could take over for T. Higgins going into next season. I like that. Let's take him here. Um and, and plus corner cornerback is, you know, I said it it drops off there, but that that is always a position you can find in the mid rounds. Receiver, you know, I think you want to if you could get a shot at one of these elite guys, you should take it while you have the chance. Mm. Ravens want us to move back, what, 13 picks, and then we'll swap thirds and fifths next year. That's probably a no for me. No. And then the Jags want us to go back 16 picks and pick up, what is that, a fifth? Like a f- I, I, again, I'd say yeah. no. Not, not for me. Roman Wilson is here. I know you liked him. We talked about him earlier. Yeah, I'm um, not sure I'd double up here, though. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Um, same with Pearsall. So who's who's left over at tackle, defensive tackle? Kenley Jackson's still there. Might I think be a bit I think, early for him. Did your uh, did Sanders still get taken? Or is he still here? No, he's still here. He's still there. Um, so we do we do have this extra pick coming up three picks later, where I'm guessing we could get Sanders still if we wanted him there. Do we do we take something else here? Do we prioritize? You know. Mm, man, do we take a defensive tackle, cornerback? Could take. Yeah, could I don't know. I, I, I guess if you wanted to, did you take Austin Booker in one of yours? Did you? I thought. Did you take Austin Booker? In I, one today, of yeah, on the two point oh, I took him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. For all the um, reasons we talked for before about you just stack up at edge. Yeah. I know defensive tackle is the bigger need, but I think McKinley Jackson's going to be maybe still there. When the Bengals pick in three picks, Booker yeah, may not be. So. I would think so. Okay, let's go with Booker. I think that's an interesting pick. Get another edge option in there. Um, Baltimore really wants to trade up here. They're giving us another <laughs> trade up. Ten picks, and then they want to swap fourth and seventh next year. It, I, I, I love the idea of like just slowly moving up in future drafts and slowly accruing yeah. these little wins and trades, but I don't know. It's just... I, I don't. I think for ten picks in the second round, I mean that's just not enough for me. I, I think I'd probably reject that. Yeah, and I'd have to go look. I can't remember the last time the Bengals traded with a division opponent. Yeah, good point. Good point. Um, move back twenty picks to get a third, uh, yeah. future third. That's a no for me as well. Jalex Hunt still here. Roman Wilson is still here. Um, let's see. Is McKinley Jackson got, still there? I'm sure he is. So we've got 83 and 97. Do we want to go corner? Or do we want to go DT? I mean, I think we're, we're, we take one here and we hope the other falls to 97, right? We, we hope that someone we like from DT. I mean, maybe falls. it's Mason Smith. They, they've got him coming in on a top 30 visit. Um, yeah. I think that could be, I think that could be interesting. 
just a little variety at least too. Yeah. Let's go with him there and let's see who falls to 97. Not that, not that it, again, not that it has to be a cornerback 97 and 108 for 177. I, I think we'll reject. And we'll reject that too. I think, I think if, I, if I'm going to make a trade down, I mean, I think trading down the second round could happen too, but I really do like the idea of trading back just a few spots in round one, like we mm-hmm. did. Picking up that extra one spot. Yeah. That yeah. yeah. I mean, one spot, like even like a two or three spot drop, and then getting that extra mid round pick. Um, I, I'm not sure if we need to be trading out too much after that, just because the Bengals already have so many picks. I mean, I guess you could get future picks, but you can only draft so many guys. Um, the, the one yeah. thing that you always worry about that, so they're giving up 149. So mm-hmm. I, it would be what a 75 pick gap where they would not, they would go from like yeah, 115 yeah. to yes. 190. So like 80 something. So it'd be huge. But still, that's to, to get to move back one spot, yeah. still get the guy you wanted originally, get that it pick at 83. I think that's worth it. Um, and, and maybe know. that's a good maybe maybe that's where they do another trade down is to replace that to fill in that gap right to like to make other a small trade back and, and refill in that section Possibly, where they're not yeah. pick. or maybe they take two of their late round picks and, and package them to, to move back into that gap spot something like that you know yeah know. maybe this pick right here because we're we're, to, we're yeah. like trying to figure out which way to go I mean Sainer's still still there so I don't know what, if we just want to keep leaning on him but what about Sanders as a as a tight end I mean yeah I, think, I, think, I mean very I think he's intriguing he he was been considered like the TE two of this class for a long time. I'm not mm-hmm. sure that's locked in as much anymore. Um, I think there are some of these other guys that we've talked about, Thea Johnson, that are kind of rising up the ranks. But I think I'd be interested in taking a guy that Ian has at 84 on his big board, getting him a little bit later than than a little mm-hmm. bit of a discount at 97. I'd be okay with that. Let's take him there. So then again, if we're trying to fill a need, I think cornerback's kind of the outstanding one here, but don't necessarily have to go with that. Um, estimate seems to always be here for us in the fourth round. Mm-hmm. Same with linebackers. Um, if we want to look at interior help, Mason McCormick is there. Right. Brandon Coleman is there from TCU. Robinson, who we who we took last time. A couple centers are available. Um, let's see. If we go back to DT, we could double up there. We could double up on edge. I wouldn't mind grabbing a cornerback here, Jay. Kerry Jackson, man, 6'3". That was a big, big cornerback. Same for yeah. Cam Hart. Um, I'd be okay with grabbing a defensive back, but I, but I wouldn't be locked into that. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. Well, you get corners after the third round and the the chances of hitting really drop it. You know, you're, you're doing it for depth, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I this feels like a spot to double up, but I'm not sure which position. Who, who's at wide receiver still? Yeah. Who do we have? Malik Washington, Jamari Thrash, Brendan Rice, Jerry Rice's mm-hmm. son. Uh, Cowing is more of that typical kind of slot receiver. Um, this is a tough one. Maybe this would be an yeah, area I'm stuck where, here. where the could, Maybe this is where trade back. Trade back. Yeah. yeah. I don't think we'll do that here, but th- that is no. something they could do in real life. Let's... Uh, Let's go with. I, I really want to take Jalex Hunt. I just don't know. I don't think they need another edge. I think they have enough guys if they if they take a third round pick. Um, let's go with another interior offensive lineman. Let's go with Brandon Coleman. I think interior line. Let's go with the, he's a very athletic yeah. guy. Um, I just think that's that's an option that they want. I think just getting depth there, and you could fi- the thing about centers and yeah, guards, you can find the you could find and you can find these guys third, fourth, fifth rounds. Like you look at look mm-hmm. at NFL guys who NFL starters around the league at interior options, a lot of mid round picks, a lot of mid round yeah. guys. So I think you're okay taking these guys and hoping they can develop into a starter. So a little bit different look here, obviously with with a trade down, um, but we still hit a lot of our key areas. We did not get a cornerback. I think that's the one area that we didn't hit in this version of the mock draft. But like we said, that might be the one spot where maybe the Bengals still have a free agent, a, a spot for a free agent earmarked where they could go out and maybe it's not Stefan Gilmore, but maybe it's Steven Nelson. Maybe it's a guy like that, just a, a guy to help fill in as like a competent starter. Maybe that's an area where they go if it ends up like this and they don't end up with a cornerback in the draft. Yeah. And I still feel like you, you're good it's more of a future pick than a, than a current year pick. And that's, it's yeah. a concession they would be willing to make to get a haul like this. Yeah. Agreed. 
All right, that is, those are our mock drafts. That was a lot of fun. I, mean, I love doing these. I, I do these all the time. Um, they're so much yeah. fun. If you like, if you <laughs> liked watching this, please come check it out. Please come check out the mock draft simulator. You can do, like Jay said at the top, yeah. you can do multi sims with your friends. You can do trades, and it's not just trades coming to you. You can. We didn't do any in, the, in this episode, but you can send out offers to other teams too. And all of our coding and backend stuff is built in to make those as realistic as possible. Our guys, up every time there's a trade, the draft order is updated in like 60 seconds, so it's up to date. All of our guys on the back end updating the rankings and kind of the the algorithm behind how this thing works. It is just top of the line and uh, not trying to be a PFN shill here, but I absolutely do love using this mock draft simulator, so please check it out. Um, last thing is just what I mentioned at the top of the show. We're planning to do a mailbag next week, so we'll put out yeah. the call for questions. But if you have any, if you're watching here, just you can throw them in the YouTube uh, comments. I will I'll check that before next week's episode if you want to put these here or we'll put the call out on Twitter. Um, but Jay, anything else? I mean, this is a lot of fun. I, I love doing these mocks. Any, anything else before we sign off on this this kind of supersized episode of the PFN Bengals podcast? Yeah, no, I mean, it, this goes back to, you know, when you do a normal mock, you get to that fourth, fifth round, you're like, okay, and you start looking at guys and you're doing a little research and it, it's when you're you know, doing it at a show like this, it just gives you a new respect for how fast and how prepared the actual yeah. teams have to be to know these guys and know what, when we get to this level, you got to make a pick in five minutes. Um, mm-hmm. It's, it's tough to do. And then with the questions for the mailbag, um, my DMS are open. So if you guys want to, if you want to, like Dallas said, leave it in the, the comments on YouTube, or you can uh, at me on Twitter, or you can send me a DM on Twitter, what, however you want to get your questions to us, we'll try to get them answered. Absolutely. Yep. By Jay Morrison for Jay. I'm at Dallas D Robinson DMS. Any, anything you want to do to get us questions for next week, we will answer all the questions that we get. Um, so again, thanks for listening. Not Check out all the of them soon. now. Let's not, hey, let's I, not. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'll, I'll get to every life. If you don't want to, if, I'll kick you off the episode. I'll handle it. I'll, I'll handle the rest <laughs> of the questions. If you don't want them, I'll take them. Uh, no, we'll, we'll be back next week. We'll grab all those questions. Um, please check out the MDS before the draft. Only two weeks left. You can go through all these different iterations. So check that out. Uh, We'll be back next week.